Hello, FM audience. I hope you guys are doing well today. I am here with Gary from Centra State Health System in New Jersey. Hi, Gary. Hello, Becky. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, nice to be here. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the invitation today. Yeah, well, I've heard some really, really good things that you guys are doing there, some really awesome things that you're doing, which I want to get to in a moment. But I want to just start and find out how are you guys? What's going on? Well, uh, you know, it's a little nutty. Our world in, uh, in healthcare has certainly changed over the last, you know, six weeks or two months now going on. Um, so, you know, life is clicking along pretty okay now. We're, we're kind of rolling into our, I guess, new norm, uh, kind of, sort of. Um, however, uh, it's taken a while to get here. So, you know, backing up the clock, when this first started to come to be, you know, COVID-19, obviously, it hit here pretty hard. Um, in, I'm in Freehold, New Jersey. I'm smack in the middle of New Jersey, um, where it's a community medical center. And there was, um, right off the bat, there was a little click of people here um, that started uh, kind of um, unexpectedly, obviously, for anywhere. But um, but that was, that was the start. So we ramped up a lot more quickly than we ever thought that we would with COVID positive people coming in the door. So uh, we had to learn quick and be on our toes and you know, you know how in the beginning things were changing and the communications that was going on in the news and at work and all of that was just a, a, a bit hard to handle. Um, but we did it and we're here and uh, uh, you know, I'm really proud of my staff for sticking in there and, you know, getting through that time. And so even to today, it's, um, it's tough. We're, um, we have today about 175 patients and there's 82 COVID patients in the building. Wow. So that's still a lot of people. We're just under 50%. We were about two thirds COVID patients in the building. So that's a lot. That is a lot. Uh, yeah. And that's a lot of change for your staff, too. Massive, yes. And, uh, you know, again, in the beginning when it ramped up so quickly, you know, the unknowns were just terrifying, really, especially for the staff. Well, all of us that had to come to work every day and come into the doors and not know what was what. Um, but mostly our host staff that has to go up to the floors and deliver trays and not knowing what was happening for quite a long time. But in time we learned and, you know, knock wood, none of us, you know, became ill um, and we're doing okay. You know, thank goodness. I, they, they, we have had a few um, employees that have been out COVID positive, but they did uh, not get it from here. They got it from like the, a family member or somewhere from the outside, interestingly enough. Um, so, but we're doing well, thank God. Good. I'm glad to hear that. And, yes. and I'm glad to hear that your, your COVID census is coming down. Um, and, and one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is this really awesome program you guys are doing on just discharge. Can you tell me about that? Yeah. So uh, interestingly enough, we, um, it started off with social services, their department calling down to me and saying, we have a, a, a COVID positive person now well being discharged or going home. They're going to be isolated at home. Uh, they knew the family. They knew the situation. They were a family that was in need. And could we help them with meals going home, some meals to kind of give them a head start? And I was like, of course we can. So we decided to just let's, let's make two dinners uh, to go freshly made. We'll set them up with cereal and uh, like a continental breakfast in the morning. So we had cereal and milk and fruit and yogurt, um, and we actually went to lunch as well, made sandwiches and some chips and water bottles. So we went out three meals. Um, and in addition to that, spoke to uh, patient experience department, which handles all of our customer service, uh, you know, things in the building. And um, through our community donations to our health center here, which has been massive and just crazy donations, um, they were able to take um, dry goods and uh, grocery items and put them into really boxes. And so with our bags of food and their boxes of dry goods and grocery items, that set them up for another couple of days of food. And together, they went home with the discharging of the discharged patient, whether it was with the family or even someone by ambulance. Um, 
And there's a, another leg to this, and that is our foundation who was handling, is handling all the donations. They had um, several gift cards to local restaurants. So we also put in an envelope in this package, this care package basically, um, gift cards to some local restaurants so they could also call the restaurants, have meals delivered to their home to get them out another couple of days. So, you know, in combination with our, you know, this multidisciplinary little project, it, it really worked well and the end result is pretty awesome. I think that's so amazing. We always talk about how food aids in the recovery process. And so to be able to, you know, come home and have some food, especially homemade food is such a great Yeah, thing. yeah. And, you know, for, for some of these people, you know, if you could imagine the stories, uh, you know, are, are endless and very tragic. You know, sometimes there might be, uh, you know, there's been couples that have both been COVID positive. One's not doing well, one's getting better, one goes home, now they're isolated and quarantined and they don't really, maybe they don't have family support around them. So this, to someone like that, or whether, you know, maybe they haven't been working and don't have money coming into the house. So to have this, give them a little head start at home where they don't have to worry about food right off the bat and that there's nothing in the refrigerator when they get home because they've been here now for a week or two or more. Um, it, it sets them up to it just gives them a head start and something they don't have to worry about because they got enough to worry about. So, you know, for something that's really not too hard for us to do here with our, you know, different departments, it really means a lot to them. Well, and I've seen some videos of COVID patients being released from hospitals, but tell me what that experience is like whenever you finally get to see someone go home. Yeah, well, it, it, there's a, there's quite a, a number of videos that, uh, you know, we have here. They're out there on social media and like other healthcare facilities, we uh, many times um, will line the, the, the hallways up with people, the, the clinicians that are on that area are leading up to the lobby and the patients leaving the building and everybody's clapping as they come through, you know, the, the, the tunnel to get to where they're going, wherever that is, the lobby or, or wherever they're being discharged to. And we also um, got some press on this, that uh, some nice press where uh, it was uh, a nurse's idea to um, have chimes be played on the overhead um, speaker system that when someone is being discharged, there's these chimes that, that play. And actually about 15 minutes before we started talking, you know, chimes went on. I'm like, oh, another person's going home. So that's very sweet. You know, it's nice. it gives everybody a bit, of, a bit of a lift and we need every lift we can, so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and how are you holding up personally? I know this is such a hard thing to be a leader at a time like this. Yeah, it's, um, it's a, it's, it's it's been challenging you know at different times you know again we're kind of in our groove now so we're we're a lot better at it um and there's more controllables and we're not uh you know we we kind of know what we're doing day to day now not to say that we can't get thrown some curveballs but um and there will be i'm sure but for now um doing okay i guess trying to you know keep the the team motivated and engaged um probably has been, uh, I can't say it's the biggest challenge, it's probably the biggest accomplishment. You know, for me, I meet with everybody every day, we do stand-up meetings, I'm on an administrative call every morning to get the details of the medical center and what's happening today, and I translate that to everybody daily so I can be, I'm trying to be as transparent as I can, everything I know, they know. Um, I don't really want to leave anything out because if they're uninformed or misinformed, there could be mistrust. I don't want any of that. I want everybody to, to know what I know. And um, that sets them up to have a feeling that they're supported and, uh, you know, I have their back. Our facility has their back. Administration has their back. So, um, so that's been working, you know, really well. And as I think has gotten us, you know, to where we are today. I didn't lose anybody and everybody, uh, you know, my, my wife has this saying that, um, you know, we didn't sign up for this, but we show up for this. And, uh, and so do my employees. And, you know, in our world, we're not paid, you know, all that, that much compared to some occupations. And, uh, you know, for them to be here and, you know, be heroes and warriors, you know, serving food and showing up every day is, is awesome. I couldn't be prouder. And I think on that note, Gary, is a perfect 
place to sign off. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I think it's an amazing thing that you guys are providing there for your, your discharge patients. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to, to, to share and, uh, you know, thank you and be well and be safe and wash your hands and don't touch your face, anybody that listens and, uh, and be well. Thank you, Gary. Take care.